So obesity is now considered a disease by the World Health Organization and many other um, systems and governments. And the reason why it's considered a disease is because it fits the criteria that we as doctors use to classify anything as a disease. So diseases must have symptoms, they must have signs, they must have etiology, those are causes for the disease, and they also must have complications. The easiest thing about obesity and considering it a disease is of course that the signs of it. So we can see that excess fat cells that either gather under the skin or around the organs, these are the signs. This is what we can see and everybody else can also see. It is much harder when we think about the symptoms of the disease. These are the things that people experience that have the disease. And what we now understand is that the two most important symptoms is excess hunger or reduction in fullness. Now, what we hear patients say to us is that very often that when they are on a diet, they are thinking about food all the time. This is the excess hunger. It's not dramatic but patients are just a little bit more hungry than people who do not have the disease. We also hear very frequently what people tell us is that when they do start eating, they don't feel full. They have to eat a large amount of food before they feel satisfied. Now, these symptoms are important because this is our primary objective when we treat the disease of obesity. We want to alleviate these symptoms. We want to help people get rid of these symptoms because this occupies them and really slows them down. Of course, what we as doctors are also interested in is reducing the complications of obesity. There are more than 220 complications, and many of us have seen people suffer with these complications. They include things like type 2 diabetes, cancer, um, heart attacks, but also osteoarthritis, um, also reduction in functionality. Now, what we first want to do is reduce people developing these complications, but we are also now able to reverse the complications, to put these complications into remission. And for that, we need maybe 15% weight loss, but that is now possible with nutritional therapies, with pharmacotherapies, and with surgical therapies. Ultimately, it is important that we treat this disease where it is situated. And the latest science has suggested that obesity is a disease of the parts of the brain that you and I cannot control by thinking. But we are able now to treat these um, parts of the brain either with nutritional therapies, with pharmacotherapies, and with surgical therapies. But because these parts of the brain cannot be controlled by thinking yourself less hungry or thinking yourself more satisfied, we can now say to patients that this disease is not your fault, but it is your responsibility and it is my responsibility to find an effective treatment for obesity. The patients who live with obesity are very concerned about the serious health problems that it may cause. We call these the complications of obesity. And this can be stratified either as mechanical, um, metabolic, or also mental. Now, if we think about the mechanical complications of obesity, we now think about, you know, how easy is it for you to sit on the floor and stand up or just you know, tie your shoelaces or put your socks and your shoes on. So these are functional impairments. And people tell us that this drives down their quality of life because they want to go out with their friends, they want to meet with their family, they want to be able to walk up a flight of stairs without being short of breath. So these mechanical complications are very known to people who live with obesity. We as doctors are, of course, also focused on the metabolic complications. So we worry about people developing type 2 diabetes, heart attacks, um, a reduction in fertility, falling pregnant, for example, um, and also heart risk of heart attacks. So these metabolic complications can now be addressed by significant weight loss. But we should also not forget about the mental complications of obesity. The stigma of this disease really causes many patients to develop um, a low mood and some even 
a, a depression. And therefore, we need to be able to address these uh, with empathy, but also with effective treatments. So obesity is defined as excess fat cells that causes a deterioration in health. There are more than 220 complications of obesity. And we as doctors are not able yet to predict which complications a person will suffer from. However, your family history are very helpful. So for example, if you have a, um, a father or mother or you have siblings who suffered with type 2 diabetes, that really raises red flags for us because it means you may be at very high risk. Equally so, if there's a lot of heart disease in the family or even cancer that is associated with obesity, those become the important predictors that we can use to help people reduce their overall risks. We are, however, not able to do a blood test or a questionnaire that tell us what these risks are, and therefore we have to monitor people in the long term with a chronic disease model to make sure that we can capture these before they start and address them as quickly as we do become aware of them. So we understand that obesity is now the number one cause of death in many countries. And the unfortunate diseases that obesity causes, such as cancer or heart attacks, are really the drivers of early death. And patients who are living with obesity, on average, only live seven years less than those patients that do not suffer with obesity. So we see that it causes a significant amount of harm. Not only do people suffer while they have the disease, they also live shorter. The treatment options for obesity are now much better than they ever have been. And the reason is that we are no longer thinking of these as weight loss treatments. We now think of them as treatments for the disease of obesity. And we can use exercise therapies, we can use nutritional therapies, we can use pharmacotherapies or surgical therapies. All of these options are equally valid. And during a consultation, we need to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of all of these approaches. Some are higher risk, but higher gain. Others may have an intermediate risk and intermediate gain. We are now able to offer all of these treatments to people, and we will help make the decisions together by understanding the benefits and the risks of these treatments.